Hello everyone, welcome to our first recording for the GSA Search Engine Ranker training. We're going to start by going over the global options for GSA which are located here. Um, you see we just done a fresh install so there isn't any information in GSA, it's a blank slate at this point. So to get started we'll go to the global options here and you'll notice that uh, this is the navigation menu from the global options here on the left hand side. We're going to go ahead and start with advanced and in this section um, you'll notice that we have the ability to set up folders to globally capture properties that we're making links from. So we want to go ahead and do that. You'll notice that the first four boxes are checked. We want to go ahead and check those. And that's going to enable GSA to create a, a database or a list of the sites that it has identified, successfully submitted to, verified, and failed during your campaigns. So you'll have a database of, or an inventory of sites that uh, you can easily use for linking from that point on. You notice also here that um, there's a number of options that aren't unchecked. Um, GSA has so many aspects to it and so many settings and so many things it's doing at one time. We want to be careful not to add to its load unnecessarily. So although you may see some features in here that you may want to use, you know, it's, it's generally best um, to leave it set the way that I'm showing you to begin with. And then if you'd like to test it by trying some of these other features afterwards, then just try them one at a time because they can have a real negative effect on its efficiency and um, if you just change a number of them without um, without re remembering which ones you checked you won't be able to remember your way back to the, the settings that we are giving you for the default. So in this case there is an add-on called SareEngines.com. It's, it's, it's pretty valuable. It's about 40 uh, Web 2.0 properties, um, really valuable ones like Tumblr and, and others. You can go to their website and, and look at it at sareengines.com. Um, if you decide to do that, it's something like 15 bucks a month. Um, it's well worth it for the value it adds. And it'll add a, a whole new set of inventory of sites you can link to in, in GSA. It's a service they provide because <clears throat> these particular Web 2.0 properties have a lot of security and they change their security often so Sarah Engines provides the service of updating all the security and providing the API to GSI as an add-on. So just put it in here and, and click update if you decide to add those that inventory to the sites you can link from. The rest of these settings, um, you know, if you, if you are having issues you can run it in debug mode and it gives you a better idea of what might be happening but that generally shouldn't be necessary the way we're showing you to set this up. And as far as recording PR and things like that, you know, for g general use, it's n it's not necessary. So we're gonna sh we're gonna set you up and you know to begin with without it. And if you decide to play with that later on, then that's fine too. The filter option is a blacklist, but we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna show you how to use GSA to. Um, filter out sites that are undesirable. Um, there's a lot of filters inside of GSA as you'll see. So these these blacklists aren't really necessary. This is a global on and off switch. So you don't need to worry about what's checked here. If, if you check this, it's going to use this these um, blacklists and if any sites are on these it won't allow a, a, a link to be made to your site on them. But we're gonna we're gonna take care of you by setting up the filters properly to get rid of those sites to begin with, so it's just not necessary. The submission area, and um, we're gonna go over the indexing and captcha um, in the next video because um, there's just a lot of information there. So we'll skip over that for the moment here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, if you're using a VPS. Um, Generally, a good setting is 300 threads for GSA. If you're running this on something like um, a, a computer in your office, you know, you're going to have to play with this. It, it really depends on the power of that computer and your internet. You might want to start at 10 and try going between, you know, 10 and 50. Or, I mean, even if you have a really good computer and really good internet in your office, maybe 100 threads somewhere in there. The timeout, you want to set at 180. And unless you have bandwidth uh, restrictions, um, you don't 
really need to use this. For instance, I have a VPS that has unlimited bandwidth, so we don't need to worry about bandwidth limits. If if you have, if you're you know if you don't have unlimited bandwidth, then you know you want you don't want to get a big bill with your um, with your internet connection service, then you, you'd probably want to experiment with using this bandwidth limit. Now this is the proxy section. Um, it's a good idea to use private proxies um, in you know with with GSA and, it, and they can be used in combination with public proxies. So to set up to use proxies, you want to use proxies for everything, whether you use public or private. Is you know this is a decision you'll need to make, and I'll, I'll explain some of the benefits, but. We want to check all of these, so we're going to be using proxies for all of the major work areas. And so for search engine submission, PR checking, and verification, we're going to check those to use proxies. And then we want it to stop if we ever run out of proxies or something happens with our proxies um, and restart when we have proxies available again. That's just a precaution. And to disable proxies as they get banned or something happens with them, you know, as the submission process um, works. So we're going to go in here to configure. And um, th these are proxies that are already in here. But if you've got private proxies, you just go here to add proxies and go down and put them in your clipboard. In other words, just highlight them with your mouse, right click and go copy, and then just go in here, import from clipboard. It's the bottom option. And it'll automatically put your private proxies in here. Um, as far as public proxies, GSA has a scraping system, so it will automatically keep you in an inventory of uh, public proxies. In order to set that on, we want to check the, the, the top box here and check the second box. And, and so what the second box does is it, it um, we're going to set it at a thousand proxies and when when your public proxies get below a thousand, it's automatically going to um, wait thirty minutes and then search for new ones. And every thirty minutes, it'll search for new ones until you have more than a thousand. So it's kind of an automatic inventory level system. Whenever um, we get down to a thousand, it's going to automatically maintain our inventory and go get more. Um, these kind of public proxies are mostly most of them you'll find are going to be bad. So we want to test everything. This is actually a setting here, so we want to t set it to um, all good and bad. We're going to test all the proxies, and we're going to remove bad ones every 400 minutes. Is how I like to set it. So essentially, private proxies—I mean, public proxies—they only last a, a very limited period of time. So they're going to burn out, and as they burn out, our inventory goes down. When it gets to a thousand, it's going to go search for more on the internet. And and maintain a, that as a minimum inventory. It's going to test all of them, and only it's going to tell us which ones are good. And the GSA will use those, in in you know along with our private proxies, and all the bad ones. It's going to delete every 400 minutes. Now this is the threads for just checking proxies, right? We set the 300 threads for actually the running of GSA, but we're also going to set 300 threads just to go out and test proxies. Find them, download them, and test them. And a timeout of 120, which is the maximum setting. And then I've got the system set up to disable proxies when they go bad. It doesn't matter whether they're private or public. So what will happen is here is we'll, we'll have, uh, and you can see what's going on is we've got the, 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 the proxies that are good are in green, and the proxies that are that is disabled over time are in red. So um, I set it every, three, every 400 minutes to go delete the, uh, bad ones, but I'm just going to do it manually here. So, just so this is easier to see and explain. So, um, it's gone out and gotten proxies. We have 2,645 now, and it's tested them all. And these are all these have all been test, tested as successful. So, it'll use these in conjunction with our private proxies. So, this is all automatic now. We can just push OK, and it, this is just going to maintain itself as we go. And then we go back to options, and you have a you have the option here of, of setting what you want to use, um, what part of the GSA's function you want to use as pri with the private proxies with, and what um, portion you want to use the the public proxies with. The main sensitive area with GSA is the submission, so I like to go 100% private with that, 
and skip for identification, which which just means if GSA has to identify a type of site to be able to know how to submit to it, when it's doing the identification process, it's just going to go do it without a proxy. And then when it's actually doing the submission, it's going to use a private proxy. The, um, the, the verification and the PR checking I've got set to do with a combination um, of public and private proxies. And then I'm going to do um, the search engines and the submissions with private only. So that's how I like to set mine up. And then so this is going to automatically maintain the entire proxy system. So that's the settings for advanced and filter and submission. We'll be going over indexing and CAPTCHA in the next two videos.